Hey, welcome to X3 One Topic Three Pundits. Myself included, I'm John C. Dvorak. I'm here with Andrew Eisner and Joe Wingo to discuss the new developments in carbon nanotubes that are apparently are going to, or at least some, some optimists believe, uh, they will replace the transistor, yeah. which seems highly unlikely to me. But you're the big well, promoter I'd of this segment. I'd say warning, this segment could get technical. <laughs> so. It is technical. <laughs> Intel announces 10 millimeter carbon nanotubes. Nanometer, it's not nanometer. Intel, it's IBM. Yeah, it's IBM, IBM yeah. uh, researchers, have, and IBM, by the way, comes up with these announcements constantly, yeah. and this stuff never goes anywhere. Uh, this is just to get publicity, believe yeah. me. <laughs> researchers at IBM have produced what they claim is the first experimental evidence of a transistor, experimental evidence, keywords, of a transistor <laughs> material that would be viable at process sizes below 10 nanometers, carbon nanotubes. Yeah, CNTs they call them. So basically yeah. at this point it doesn't even work yet. No, no but it see never the, yeah. <laughs> but, but the problem, well you want to want to read the rest of it? I'll read the rest of it. As the process sizes shrink and components become packed even more densely, several challenges present themselves, not the least of which is current leakage, which confuses nearby transistors brrr, and corrupts the signal. As Intel researchers... Or Nothing IBM, worse than a confused transistor. As IBM researchers <laughs> found in a white paper detailing the struggles with smashing what they call a 10 nanometer physical gate length barrier. There you go. So that's it in a nutshell. The, basically it's not the, anything <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> the problem is, you know, they're at uh, right now. Do you remember the days, it was years ago, you would be within yes. your uh, time frame yeah, of thought. Okay. Uh, where they said, well, you know, submicron can't be yeah. done. <laughs> and everything, well, everything was huge. And you had that's to do, right. you know, separate components. You couldn't do anything. Yeah, and right. the first integrated circuits were, you know, they didn't do anything because you couldn't go submicron. And then it went, they broke the submicron barrier. Right. And then it went smaller. And, and it's never stopped. No. Now, of well, course, it might stop, and, but then be continue with this technology. But I think the old technology may continue. Well, they say that there are limitations, but they're down to like, you know, 30, uh, Sandy Bridge is 32 nanometers, I believe, and the, the successor to Sandy Bridge, which is Ivy Bridge, I think brings it down to 22 nanometers. Right. And so they say below that, and then the new Haswell chip, which is scheduled for, yeah. that's uh, 2013. Yeah, that could be the Has-Been chip. <laughs> <laughs> Has-Been <laughs> might not do so well, but, but that's going to be 22 nanometers, but it's going to add a whole, it's going to add new instructions, so it's going to be even more powerful. But they say below that, then you start to get crosstalk, and as you say, you know, confused transistors, and so carbon nanotubes, or as they call them, CNTs, which I think, you know, you're going to hear a lot more about, may replace the old silicon, and so it's going to end up being, instead of Silicon Valley, it'll be... What? Yeah, that's what it's going to end up being. Carbon anyway. nanotube that's valley. That's what it's going to end up Carbon <laughs> valley. You're going to go there, what the hell happened to this industry? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, so keep an ear, keep an ear out for CNTs. All right, we'll keep yeah. an eye out for Okay, it. keep an eye out too. <laughs> and it will, it'll, be, it'll be on the same list of this impossible to do uh, submicron. Okay. You've been watching X3.